first giving honor to God, Pastor Baines, and everyone, all the ministers on the roster and everything. Um, first, we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, to, Lord, to gather together in your name. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray that anything that will distract us from your word, it will be blocked out in the name of Jesus. Allow us to focus on you and on what you have for us to get from this sermon today, Father. In your son Jesus Christ's name, I pray that we will take it in, meditate upon it, and be ready to bring it back forth when you say that it is time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Today, today's scripture is coming from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 through 8, and it reads, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in, hev in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to, to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen. You may be seated. And for a topic today, I would like to use at war with myself at war with myself and you might be like what does this mean how can you be at war with yourself you can't fight yourself you all seen people just that when you play around you're trying to like fight and box you can't fight and box yourself you can't be at war with yourself it's like what you got to be crazy to be at war with yourself it's like nope I'm not crazy I'm fine and neither are you what like what? What are you talking about? I'm talking about mental war. The mental war that we're fighting every day that goes on inside of our minds. <laughs> and um, it's a struggle every day that for just trying to stay on the right path to do what we know is right according to uh, the word of God. And most people think that as Christians, it should be easy. You should have, oh, you, you walk with Christ, you down with Christ, you go with Christ. You shouldn't have no problems. No, that's when you have the most problems. When you, can, when you turn away from the sin of this world and you give your life unto God, that's when the devil really wants to, to test you and fight against you and make you war within yourself because he don't want you to have the goodness of life that God has in store for you. And you're just like, okay. Well, how does he attack you? One of the main ways the devil likes to attack us is through our mind. He wants to give us thoughts that make us think that we're unworthy, that we don't deserve what God has for us. And so today we're going to look at um, six things, six thoughts that he tries to put into our minds to make us think that we're not worthy, to turn us away from what God has in store for us. And most people you might be like, why, why do I got to guard my mind? Why do I got to make sure my mind is right? Yeah. Because Proverbs 4 and um, 23 states, Above all else, guard your heart, mind, for everything you do flows from it. Yeah. Every thought, every action, every word, before we can do it, think it, say it, it starts in the mind. Yeah. So everything that, we, we, everything that goes on about us, it starts in the mind. Yeah. If you don't guard your mind, then you can't make sure that your actions, your thoughts are right. Amen. Okay, so let's, let's, what are the six thoughts that he tries to put into us that, that makes us want to turn away, to give up, to let go? The six that I'm going to focus on today is anxiousness, hopelessness, being unlovable, being unworthy, being depressed, and then being suicidal. There are many more dark and undesirable thoughts that the devil wants to, to use to make us feel like we're, we're unworthy and we don't deserve God's grace, but this is what we're focusing on today. And on these six things, we're going to focus on three things from these six things. We're going to find out the definition of the word. We're going to hear the lies that the devil tries to give you to, to make you think that this is what you need. 
and then we're going to find out what the Bible says, the truth, our weapons, that help us stand in the face of these thoughts and to fight against them. Okay, the first one, anxiousness. Anxiousness is defined as feeling or showing worry, nervousness, or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. Hmm. Okay, that's the definition. What's the lie? Your bills are too high. You don't got enough money to pay your bills. You gonna lose your home. You always sick. You gonna die. Don't nobody like you. Your thoughts don't matter. That's a lie. It's anxiety. Anxiety is a powerful feeling that can cause you to become crippled by fear and worry that we can't fo so that you can't focus on the things or think about anything else. When you can only focus on your worries or fears, you can't hear what God is trying to tell you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 through 34 talks about God providing for the birds of the air and how he clothes the lilies of the field, even though they don't do nothing to earn it. And then it goes on and says, how much more precious are we than they? How much more precious are we than, than the birds of the air, the lilies of the field? We were made in God's image. God spoke and said, let this be. But when God made us, he put his hands to us and formed and shaped us in his image and his likeness. So how much more precious are we than the lilies of the field and the birds of the air? It's like, if, we're, if he put his hands to us and created us, we're more important than all of this. He will supply all your needs. Be anxious about nothing. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers sister, and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, in Anything, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. God tells us, you ain't got to worry about it. I got you. I got this. I got your back. There is nothing on this earth that is, that is for you that I can't provide for you. Don't worry about it. And it's like, Tiana, what you talking about? You don't know about anxiousness. Oh, Tiana knows about anxiousness. Tiana knows about worrying about things. When, when, you, when you stop working and you take over $6,000 a month out of your household accounts, and you still got the same bills that you had before. Those, you got a mortgage, you got a car payment, you got all this stuff before you still had. And you looking and it's like, okay, this is what my paycheck was. This is my husband's paycheck. I don't know if it's gonna provide it. You know what the Lord, is, he did, he still is, and he still will be providing and taking care of me. I have did nothing to deserve it. But because he loved me, because he created me in his image and his likeness, he will provide for me. So when those anxious thoughts come into your mind, when it comes and tries to cripple you with fear, like, no, 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 my God says, how much more precious am, are I than the, field, than the lilies of the field and the birds of the air? They don't do nothing to earn it, but he, but he provides and feeds them. So look. I praise and I worship, my, I worship my God. I am, I'm, I'm learning, I'm walking with him. I, I'm working on it. You have earned it. You're worthy of his praise. You're worthy. He's going to work it out and he's going to give you, he's going to provide for you everything that you need. Just trust in him. Yes. Amen. The next, the next point, hopelessness. The definition of hopelessness is having no expectation of good or success. Why should you try? You can't do anything. You mess up everything. You nothing but a failure. That's the lies. That's the lies. When you feel hopeless, you don't believe that you can do anything. You believe that there's no future for you. That's a lie. The look at God's word in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God says, I know what I got for you. Just stand strong, hold on to me, I got it. You, there are, you are not a failure, you are not hopeless. You can do things. You should try and you should keep pushing through because God, God has a plan, he has a plan, he has a hope, he has 
he has a path that is set forth before you to get to where he has for you to be. And if you follow that path, you will, you will be better for it. And it's like, well, how do you know this? Because, he tells us again in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And as the heavens are high, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You don't know what God has in store for you because we can't even fathom all the blessings and all the things that he has just laid up in store for us as long as we trust in him. It's like, but I don't know how. Just trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Acknowledge God and he will direct your path. He will put you, lead you, and guide you to where you need to go. What you mean? I just lost my job. That don't mean nothing. What is the path that God has for you? The path for the fu to the future that God has for you is not through that job. It's through somewhere else. You just trust and acknowledge that where you're going is where, where you're at is where exactly where God wants you to be. And then the next truth, the next weapon that we have that we need to stand on when we feel hopeless is to remember that Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. I can do this. I can do that. I can do whatever I put my mind forth to because the Christ that lives in me strengthens me. It allows me to stand in the face of adversity and stand in the face of anything and say, I can do this. The Lord has my back. There is no weapon on this earth that will prosper against me because the Lord is who is guiding me. The Lord is with me. Yes. Amen. <laughs> it's like, there's hope. There's a future for me. There's a hope. There's a future for you. Why? Because the Lord in his word said it. And if his word said it, it's not a lie. The Lord cannot lie. Amen. See, we're moving through this real good. Um, our third one is unlovable. Feeling, feelings of um, being unlovable. Incapable of inspiring love or admiration. Not having attractive or appealing uh, qualities. The lie. I'm ugly. You, I hate myself. Why would somebody like me? If you remember nothing else from this whole sermon, remember this. You are worthy of love. God loves you. He loves you enough that in John chapter 3, verse 16, he says that he sent his only begotten son, his beloved son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That is love. It says no greater love had a man than to lay down his life for his friend. The ultimate love is to lay down your life for somebody else. God had the ultimate love that he sent Jesus, who knew no sin, to take on our sin and to give up his life, to go, to be beaten, to be spit upon, to be kicked around because, so that he could bear the burdens of our sin. That is love. John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 through 11 says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his, he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not the way we love God, but the way that he, that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice of our sins. I love all y'all, but I ain't sending my son to come die for y'all. So that's, that's, that tells you that's the love. Just think about it. Think about it. Anyone that has children or you have a loved one, would you allow that person to go and be killed or to be hurt in the place of someone else. I love my son. Mm, I ain't there. I'm not there yet. I'm not going to say I, I'm not there yet. He's still working on me on that one. And it's, we have to understand that it's not just um, about other people loving us. It's about loving yourself too. You can't love someone else if you don't love yourself. Love yourself because you are made in the image of God. He didn't make a mistake when he made you. He didn't put something in the wrong place. You are made and shaped and formed in the way that you are because of God's love. The other day, Xavier was saying he was, um, he was saying that 
he said, um, oh, I'm, I need to lose some weight. I need to do something. And I was like, Xavier, you are perfect in just the way you are. And he was like, yeah, no, but I need to lose some weight. And I'm like, no, buddy, you don't understand just how perfect you are. You, just, you don't understand just how precious and special you are. You are the result of prayer, like a Hannah prayer. You have no idea how much prayer your mama went through on her knees crying out to God asking for you. And when God granted you and made you and formed you in your mother's womb, you are perfect just the way you are. You have no idea the things that God has in store for you. Xavier, I'm speaking this into you, buddy. You have no idea the things that God has in store for you. He is going to do awesome and wondrous works for his kingdom through you. Because you are the result of prayer, a covenant made with God. Amen. God loved you before you, was, before you were you. Before your mama, your daddy, and anybody came together and thought about you, he loved you. There's nothing you can do to change it. Do we deserve it? No. But he loves us anyway. The love of mankind is fleeting, but the love of Christ, of love of God, is eternal and everlasting. Remember that. If you remember nothing else, you are worthy of love. You are lovable. Amen. Our next uh, topic we're going to talk about is um, unworthy, unworthy, unworthy. Lacking in excellence or value. The lie. You are nothing. No one cares what you think. You don't deserve anything. You are not on the same level with other Christians. You can't even pray right. So what makes you think you can ask God for anything? You messed up too many times. All that you have done, all, after all that you have done, do you really think God still loves and cares about you? Those are the lies he tells us. But Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 tells us, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Right. He understands. He knows that you're going to mess up. He knows that you're going to sin. That's why Jesus came for us. He wants you to know that. But you don't be people like, but, but you don't understand. How can God understand what the sin that I've did or where I've been? He can understand because he's been there. He came down on earth in the form of Jesus Christ. He was tempted. He knew that you would be tempted. And he says, it's okay. I love you anyway. You're still worthy of what I have in store for you. Yes. Psalms chapter 103 verses 8 through 14. This I read this last night, y'all, and I wanted to start jumping, and screaming, and shouting. It was after midnight, but I couldn't do it because I didn't want to wake up the whole house. Because that little one back there, you wake up, and she ain't going back to sleep. Um, Psalms chapter 103, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserves or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he, has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed, and he remembers that we are dust. Amen. I read that, and I was just like, wow. Wow. You, he has compassion. As far as the, as the heavens is above the earth, that's just how great his love for us is. The heavens are un unmeasurable. We can, we can measure the distance from the earth to the sky. Okay, we can measure that. We can measure the distance from the earth to outer space. But there is no, we can't measure the distance from the earth to the heavens where God reigns. That means you can't measure the love, the amount of love that he has for you. Wow. As far as, as, far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. He, knew your, he knows what your sins are, but as far, you know the east and the west can never meet. No matter how far east you go, you're not going to meet west. No matter how far west you go, you're not going to meet east. 
that is how far away from us that he has taken our sins away from us. He's like, I understand. I know that you have sinned, but guess what? You have come to me. You are my child. I take those sins away from you. You don't have to think about them. You don't have to worry on them or harp on them anymore. It is because I love you that I take this away from you, and you are worthy of everything that I have for you, that I have in store for you, because I don't see your sin. When I see you, I just see you. I see my child. I don't see your sin. When I see Sydney, I don't see the times that she done kicked me in the head or the times she wake me up out of my sleep. I don't see the times she done spilled milk on the floor or whatever. I see my child. I see this beautiful, wonderful child that God has given me that is so amazing to me. And that is what God sees when he looks at us. He don't see all the filth and dirtiness that we've had going on inside of us. No, he sees this fresh newborn babe of a child that you can't help but smile at. Amen. Amen. We're almost done. Did y'all know that? <laughs> Our um, fifth, fifth topic we're going to talk about is depressed. He wants us to feel depressed. And the, the definition of depressed is in a state of general unhappiness or despondency. The devil wants you to feel depressed. Depressed people can't function in the way that God created them to function. When you are depressed, you just don't want to do anything. You just want to close yourself off from everybody. You can't find joy in anything. It's like being in a hole that you can't climb, up, climb out of. Crying doesn't help, and neither does being angry or your wrath. You feel like you've prayed with all your might, but you're still depressed. What can you do? What can you do? Depression is something, it's real. And I want y'all to know that it's not something to play with. I'm not going to tell you that right here what this word says is it's going to cure your depression, but it's going to help you when you turn to God and go look in his word. And when we look in his word, we go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think on that. Sometimes in the midst of your sadness, you have to find a reason to be happy and smile. Find joy in the little things in the little things, in the midst of darkness, when you're in a dark room and you turn even a little print prick of light brightens up the room. So in the midst of your sadness, in the midst of your depression, remember on this, think on those things that are lovely. Think on what is true, what is noble. Think on the things that make you happy, that you can find joy in. Think on those things. Psalms chapter 147, verse 3, it says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He knows that you're sad. He knows that you're brokenhearted. He knows how you feel. He is going to bind up those wounds. He is going to restore your joy to you. And you're like, how can he restore my joy to me? I can't find any joy. There is joy. There is peace. Ask for it. He will give it to you. Is it going to happen like this? No, 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 no. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be a process. I understand. It's going to be a process. How you understand about depression? Ouch. Been there, done that. Something that I've dealt with. And it's something that I will continue to deal with because when you cast out an evil spirit or a demon, it goes about looking for somewhere else. It can't find nowhere else to go. It go and get seven more that are even worse than itself and come back on you. So what do you do? You don't isolate yourself. You don't put yourself away. God says where two or three are assembled together, I will be in the midst. Assemble yourselves together with your, with your fellow saints in Christ. Ask for help. Know that he is there. He will provide a way. When you think that there's no way, God is the way. There's been many of nights where I've put my head just laid out on the floor. I'm like, Lord, I can't do this without you. And that still voice in my head says, you can do it, my daughter. My daughter, it's okay. I got you. I understand that you're sad right now, but joy won't, it, your, the sadness won't last forever. Your joy will be restored. Your joy can come in the morning. Endure the, he that endure it to the end. He that endure it to the end. They get the prize. Remember that. And the, and the last one we're going to talk about is um, suicidal. He wants you to feel suicidal. What does that mean? The definition is destructive to one's own life. The lies. Everyone will be better off if you were not here. You have nothing to live for. You will be better off dead. That's a lie. 
It is these unrelenting thoughts that cause people to take their own lives. When thoughts like this enter our minds, it can seem like there is no way to stop them. But that's not true. We must first recognize that these thoughts are in fact lies. We must learn to answer thoughts like this with, that is a lie. When we do this, we are speaking life into our situation. When we, when we have these thoughts, you ain't nothing. You don't, everybody would be better off without you. That's a lie. You can speak it, speak it. I mean, stand up out loud, speak it out loud. That is a lie. Every thought, everything that comes against what the word of God says, it is a lie. And we must be willing to stand firm and speak it and say it is a lie. Yes. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. The death and life are in the power of the, tongue, of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. It is not God's will. It is not God's will for us to, to take our own lives. He, our lives are precious to us. We are so precious. It says that Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 4, since you are, since you are precious and honored in my sight, because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. He, he will give a nation in exchange for your life. That's just how important and precious you are. Why? Because he has a plan for you. Nobody is a mistake. Nothing is a mistake. You are, where, you are here because he wants you to be here. He placed you here for a reason. You may not understand it, but God understands it. And he has a plan and a future for your life. You just have to trust in him and, go, and know that he is working it out. It's important to remember that we are not alone. God is always there. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Wow. Don't fear. I am with you. Even when you think you're alone, when you think nobody cares, nobody is there, God is with you. He is right there with you. He is your comforter. He is your comforter. Psalms chapter 34, verse 18 and 19. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from in them all. No matter your troubles, no matter your circumstances, no matter your situations, don't ever think that it's not, that there is no hope. There is no deliverance. God can deliver you from them all. You just got to put your, cast your cares on him. Put your, put your, put all your cares, all your worries, cast it onto the Lord. Turn unto God and ask him, ask him for his guidance. Ask him for his comfort. Ask him for his deliverance. He will deliver you. Thoughts of suicide cannot cannot win. It cannot overtake you when you cast your cares and you talk to Lord, to, the, to God and know that he understands that you are broken hearted. He understands that you have troubles. But guess what? He says the Lord will deliver you. He will deliver you from everything. He also puts people in our path to help us in our times of need and sorrow. Don't be afraid to reach out and help someone who is struggling or to reach out for help if you are struggling. God won't ever let you go, and he has given you others in life to help shoulder this burden. There is support and counseling available through many who understand who, or who have walked this road before. Pastor Bishop, he is one of my greatest supports when, these, when any kind of thoughts like this come up into me. I mean, there's been many a nights he'll get that text, pray for me, pray for me. Because I know that I can't do it by myself. I know that I can't do it alone. And if, believe, and, okay, you a minister. You should be able to, no, no, no. If your ministers can't do it alone, then guess what? You can't do it alone either. Reach out. Ask for help. There are many things that the devil may try to use to get us to turn away from God. But we must remain strong when faced with all the destructive thoughts that he sends our way. Even though we can't physically see the battle, every day there is a war being fought for us. We must put on the whole armor of God and be ready to fight like our life depends on it because it does. Amen, amen, amen. Could everyone please stand? Please stand. I have a prayer that I'd like to pray right now. Anxiousness, hopelessness, unlovableness, unworthiness, depression, suicidal thoughts. I didn't know you had a name. I thought your lies were my thoughts and I allowed you to lie to me for too long. 
I took you on as my identity. I didn't, and I didn't even know it. I never th knew a thought could be so destructive. I never knew that you could lie to me so deeply about who I am. But now that I know who you are and what you can do, I am declaring that your time is up. I will no longer allow you to dwell in my temple. God has equipped me with the necessary weapons to recognize and defeat you. I will no longer believe your lies. And in Jesus' name, I am set free. Amen. Please remain standing. We never like to end any service without giving you an opportunity to allow us to minister to you through prayer. So there's anyone here today that need prayer, you may come. Also, 